Hi gardeners, welcome to the June tour. And if you remember a few days ago, we were cold. We were in overcoats, fighting the wind. Well, we're still fighting the wind, but today it's a glorious 80 degrees. It's beginning to dry out, and we're starting with golden beets today. This is about the size we're looking for, about softball to tennis ball size. And look how easy that just comes up. We've got two or three that are like this size. The clump ones have smaller ones. These will be, you just twist out. That's a beauty right there. That is gorgeous. And then we have one or two more that we're going to take care of. And we'll move on here. Here's a nice one. It has come up very quickly in the past few days. Just twist to break the little roots. That is a glorious golden beet. So we now have three good beets that I can see. We might check for more. I see a fourth. Can you see them right here? They're growing by leaps and bounds now. A little bit split on the bottom. So that one might be bad. But there's always the compost heap they can always provide us. And here's the last. This is in a clump. When you have a clump, just twist them first, and that way they won't hurt your friends. Good size golden beans. Four or five, nice one there. All right, next we have our spring onions. And yes, with the, ha the absolute deluge we had the other day, weeds have taken advantage of it. They get in right next to the growth. Prying them out of the ground alone is really tough. As you can see here, as you break the roots, that's a massive spring onion. And we have plenty more of these that we're going to need to take care of. So we have well over 50 left. So we have golden beets, we have spring onions. grouping there and these right here we're letting these about three go to seed and we'll save that seed for our planting in a few months time we will plant these in the autumn and let them overwinter this is a variety called Tokyo long white the Japanese onions are bred to uh, overwinter okay that's why they get so large with this uh, massive uh, sun that pops up in late spring. They already have deep roots and they're already well established. So these are three or four times the size of your ordinary onion in the grocery. Next we have our carrots. The carrots are finally looking fine. Again, the odd weed tries to take advantage, but we have Nantes carrots and Burpee short and sweet. The short and sweets are going to be very stubby and incredibly sweet. Be perfect if you like making carrot cakes. And these are more your store-bought eating potato uh, uh, carrots. These are going to be about six to eight inches long, longer and thinner. Okay. Now we're going to go to our beans. As you can see, we're starting to get flowers on the beans. So these are the ones that were sown in ground. One, two, three. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve here. And these were grown in trays that are a little bit older. You can see the flowers on almost on all of these here. And the beginning of beans. These are jade bush beans and the most flavorful beans. succession planting. As we go along, 
every two weeks we put in another six to eight beans and that way we always have a rolling harvest of plants that are near their peak. Over here we have our summer squash. We have three that are looking great. One, two, three. This one was recently transplanted so he's probably in a little bit of transplant stock. I see new growth here so he's going to be all right. This fifth one is going to go in once we start plucking out the rest of our garlic here. And once again, getting underneath these massive bulbs. Can you hear that breakage? Oh, he's a nice one. That's a good medium size. He's nice and healthy. Clean up nicely and it'll store well, well because most of the outside is still intact even though we've had a very very wet spring the uh, rot hasn't gotten through all the layers yet and he will uh, dry out indoors and everybody says that the house will smell like an Italian kitchen which is not a bad way to smell if you love garlic These are smaller because they looks like they tillered out of the same plant, out of the same seed. Now sometimes happens where one seed will produce more than one plant. And so we have three medium garlic here instead of one large. And I'm okay with that too. There'll be three or four bulbs in each of those. So as we make more space, this will be able to come out here. We'll do one more. He looks like he has potential. Yeah. Nice. You can see how the ground is still pretty wet and clingy here, but it was nothing like it was four or five days ago when it was just an absolute bog. So you can see this part down here, a very nice garlic, about eight cloves in there, and a whole lot of soil that is still wet and sticky. So a good result coming here in garlic. Next, we're gonna take a look at our kohlrabi right over here. We've had a little trouble with insect damage, but if you look in underneath here, you can see that kohlrabi bulb starting to form and probably in a week or two this will be ready to pick that is going to be great so this is the advantage of protecting from insects early the plant is big enough that these holes are not causing a great deal of damage here is a beautiful one. zoom in on him in there what a great kohlrabi he's going to be so that's over two inches in diameter just about ready for picking any day now. Bulb onions. They still have a ways to go. And of course, weeds are always present. The shallots are really catching up well. Shallots are a long day crop, and that means that they need a lot of sunshine. So with a long day crop, we want to have like 14 hours of full sun on them and that will help them out set the bulb. These things are in groups of about four here and it li literally could be another 40 to 60 days before they're ready. All right, now let's go over here to our tomatoes. These are our grape tomatoes. We have one, two, three, four, five here. There's the runt of the litter. ready to start being woven through the trellis and our boxcar willies have been growing nicely and they're getting to the point uh, where they can be woven they have very good strong stems and that's because they were in ground I mean uh, in trays for almost two months and we potted them up a couple of times to allow their root systems to really develop okay next we'll go over to potatoes
this is our Yukon. Our Yukon Golds here. And some of them are beginning to turn, as you can see. So right here we had a crop that was really going yellow. This was from two plants that had really died off. So that feels like about three pounds, I would say. That feels good. So three pounds from two, we've got over 20 to go in this bed. And just as important, right here, this is the beginning of winter squash. So we have already intersowed squash plants. We have a large one over here. Let me step around a bit. Here it is. This is a winter squash right here. So we have two winter squash. I sowed six and only two have come up so far. Not the world's best. But this is how we get a head start on our butternut squash. Hopefully we'll get two or three good plants. And last year we had one plant that yielded over 100 pounds of butternut squash. So if we can get two or three, even if they go smaller, we're going to be happy. Over here are Kennebex. These are a second early as you can see, they're beginning to try to flower some here. Second earlies just mean that they harvest about four or six weeks later than the first earlies. And because that they've matured longer, they tend to be a little bit larger and a little more starchy. So they're very good to make french fries out of. Well, that's about it. Except for in our old bin, we still have our volunteers. And we are slowly building up our first uh, compost bin. It's about two-thirds of the way full now. Over here in the cold frame, we have taken out all of the spinach now. And we have it closed for a reason. If we close the bin, we don't get airborne weeds going inside. And as you can see, just one or two that are trying to encroach from the outside. But otherwise, keeping that bin closed is going to allow these old roots to help decompose and fertilize the soil. These are uh, old spinach branches right here. So we'll just keep that closed to minimize damage from wind-blown seeds. Kohlrabi, carrots, onions, beets, spinach, we still have a couple of pounds in the refrigerator. Potatoes, garlic, and tomatoes soon to come. We've got ourselves some food here, folks, and you can too. Don't forget, like and share with a couple of hundred of your closest friends, and we'll see you soon. Thanks.